On October 15, 2017, the first year of testing for our earthquake forecasting model came to a close. This video details year number one. First, here are Earth's fault zones in blue overlaying a 100-year heat map of large earthquakes. These are the regions that qualify to be part of the model, and the first rule of the model is about how much of the faults can be placed on alert. No more than 15% of global faults may be identified as active at any one time. There is a further limit of 20% of the ring of fire because otherwise you could just load the 15% into the ring of fire and cheat with your statistics. Here is what one of those maps might look like and we come to our first important point. These alerts are currently informational, not actionable. We're trying to work towards that point but right now cannot constrain highest risk enough to call for action. Too much of the world is on alert, and with that as the case, no one earthquake can be very telling either. We will expect to get some hits, but if the hit rate is wildly higher than the fault coverage or opportunity to get a hit, then we may have something. Two more rules. The most recent rule and the highest alert rule. Let's say I have your city on alert for a week, and then I take it off, and then the big one hits that city one minute later. It is a miss. Only the latest and most recent alert map counts, no looking back days and time and cheating. And for the highest alert, ordering goes alert star, red alert, and then everything else. We've used lots of colors when there's a lot to watch in the coming days. So here, despite the red lines, only alert star counts as highest alert, and that is the only area that may take success on this map. If I deleted the star, the three red marks in the ring of fire would activate as the highest alert. Do you see how that works? So here is our stat sheet for year one. The full list of forecasts and earthquakes and coverage percentages is found at quakewatch.net. But for now, let's keep it simple and just eye the most important earthquakes of the last year. This is pretty self-explanatory. It's the largest quakes in the world and in the U.S. and Europe at the bottom. The date, magnitude, location, and whether or not it was a hit. Let's run down the top five here. Number one, of course, was that 8.1 that just struck Mexico last month. As you can see, nothing super special or psychic. Didn't call out the city, but the region in Mexico in red did take that hit. Numbers 2 and 3 were 7.9s that both struck Papua New Guinea. Both times, that region was on red alert, but again, not like we called out the city specifically. Number 4, a 7.8 in New Zealand that was downgraded from a righteous 8.0 reading, again, in the red zone. So let's go to number 5, which was a miss, a 7.8 in the Solomon Islands. Now, take a look at the four places alerted on the map in total. Top four quakes of the day struck around those locations. High five hit South America, 6.0 hit the red line in China, and the 6.6 .6 hit the red line in California, 7.8 in the Solomon Islands being the only miss. Almost got all of the top five. And with number five, since you saw the California quake, this map you saw earlier, that was indeed the posting active for the 6.6 .6 in Italy last year. So here are the stats, and I'll talk us down the list. We had eight main shocks, seven pointers, and 63 sixes. Aftershocks and foreshocks are not part of what we're seeking here. The model tagged six and 33 of them respectively for success rates at the seven and six magnitude range of 75 and 52 percent respectively. We indeed expect the percentage to go down as magnitude does due to the wealth of things that can trigger smaller quakes versus the fewer that precede larger ones. Fault coverage ended up at 14.1 for the ring of fire and 9% for the whole world. Since all magnitude 7 events hit the ring of fire, the 14.1% chance of success is used. I rounded up to 15% just to play devil's advocate and make it a little harder on ourselves. And indeed, we're still looking at extremely significant statistical results. Four of the top five, six of eight magnitude 7 hits, and the biggest quakes in the continental U.S. and Europe. Folks, the last thing I want to share is what you can feel free to say versus claims you might think up yourself. Like I said earlier, this is not godlike prophecy. It is a small baby step in the right direction, and we claim nothing more on that front. The statistics are sound, and indeed the fault coverage expectation of success was dwarfed by a factor of four when it was actually put into play. The model is still informational only, but I assert with the utmost force that what has happened here merits further investigation by official sources, but only if they want to predict earthquakes.